This presentation is called, How Big Is Your Brain? And we're not talking about your individual brain, but your brain as a representative of Homo sapiens sapiens. So your brain is big. Um, what we're going to try to answer here is how big compared to other mammals. So to compare brain size meaningfully, we have to do three things. First, we have to adjust for relative size, but that's not enough. Uh, secondly, we have to scale allometrically. And third, we have to maintain phylogenetic consistency. So we're going to explain each of these three things in answering the question, how big is your brain? So the brain of a sperm whale is the largest mammalian brain, and they average about 17 pounds. Human brains, on the other hand, average about 3 pounds. So in absolute terms, obviously, the sperm whale has the bigger brain. And that, evidently, is a photo of a sperm whale brain. Brains aren't terribly attractive. But what uh, if we adjust for the size of humans and sperm whales? Well, there's quite a difference there. So male sperm whales run on the order of 100,000 pounds as adults. Uh, humans uh, run about 150 pounds. And that's a photo from Lamalara in Indonesia where hunters have just killed a whale. And how they do that is harpooning off of small boats. David Nolan of the Anthropology Department of Boise State studied whaling in La Malara. So here's our sperm whale brain and there's our th uh, three pound human brain. When we relate these to body mass, we find that there's one pound of brains per 5,800 pounds of body mass in the sperm well, whereas there's one pound of brain per 50 pounds of body mass in a human being. So relatively speaking, we have a lot more brains. But the question is, are human brains bigger than expected for a mammal of our size? We're going to call this the encephalization question. And encephalization is an increase in brain size. And the tough question in answering this is how do we determine what is expected? How do we know what's expected for a mammal of our size? So one way that we could try to answer this is by constructing an isometric index. And there's four steps to doing this. Uh, first, we go out and we collect some brains from a sample of different mammals, for example. And we also get body mass uh, data. So we can weigh brains and relate the weight of the brain to the body mass. Uh, then we calculate the averages. And we call the average 1.0. We can then use this index that we've constructed to compare uh, brains using an EQ. And an EQ refers to an encephalization quotient. So it's just an index that allows us to quickly state the relative size of different brains. So here's a made up example uh, with some nice easy math uh, that's relevant to humans uh, given our body size. And let's say we go out and we collect one mammal and we find that for that mammal there's one pound of brains per every 150 pounds of body mass. And then we capture a second mammal and we find there's two pounds of brain per every 150 pounds of body mass. And then we capture a third mammal, which seems to be a human being, uh, because there we have three pounds of brain per 150 pounds of body mass. So to turn this into an index, first we calculate the average. And that means we have to add that up. We've already got it relative to body mass. So we just add one plus two plus three and get six, and then we divide by three, which is our sample size, and we find that two pounds of brain per 150 pounds of body mass, that's the average, 
And so we call that 1.0. So that second mammal with two pounds of brain per 150 pounds of body mass has an EQ of 1.0. It's exactly what's expected for a mammal of its size. The human being in this example has an EQ of 1.5. It's one and a half times larger than expected for a mammal of its size. And remember, this is a made up example. We're going to look at some uh, more carefully derived evidence shortly. But using this model, the first mammal has an EQ of 0.5, and that means its brain is half the size of ex that would be expected uh, for a mammal of its size. So we've been able to define this index of an EQ, and we can quickly and easily then compare uh, brain sizes of different mammals. But it turns out there's a problem with applying an isometric index to brain size. And this is shown by this hybrid human mouse figure. Um, it turns out that small mammals have proportionally bigger brains than do big mammals. And indeed, if we use an isometric index, the encephalization of a mouse is about equivalent to the encephalization of a human being. And that bothers us. If we go to intraspecific comparison, say among human beings, uh, those fare even worse. So here's a photo of a Chihuahua and a Great Dane. And if we used an isometric index here, uh, who has uh, the greater encephalization quotient? All right, and it turns out uh, by some lead, it's the Chihuahua. And the reason for this is that body size changes more than brain size. So when we do comparisons of brain size and body size within a species, um, like dogs or humans, body size can change much more dramatically than brain size. So isometric scaling is based on proportional growth. It's based on the expectation that brain size will change in step with body size. But in fact, this isn't what we observe. So brain expansion does not move in proportion to body size, and therefore we've got to adjust our measure. We can't use isometric scaling. So how do we adjust for this? Well, it turns out brains are not unique. So when we're comparing different mammals, body size matters a lot. And it turns out uh, that there are a lot of different features of mammals don't change in proportion to body size. So this is showing the surface area of mammalian bodies to their mass. And what we see here is the body mass is expanding at a rate that's about two thirds the surface area. So this gives us a slope of 0.63, roughly about two thirds. And metabolisms also follow this two thirds rule. So one thing we could do uh, to scale differently this is called allometric scaling, and this is where proportions change as size changes. We could use metabolism to define our expectations. And so if we do allometric scaling and we scale brains to body mass using the metabolic ratio, uh, which is somewhere between two thirds and three quarters, depending on who you read, um, given this, uh, we can expect body size to triple as brain size doubles. And then we can say, well, how big are human brains? What's our EQ given allometric scaling uh, based on metabolism? And uh, this is important uh, because, for example, small mammals have much higher metabolisms than big mammals. Uh, small mammals have faster heartbeats than big mammals. And small mammals have shorter life expectancies than big mammals. So a lot of things change allometrically as we change the size of a mammal. So uh, <clears throat> adjusting for allometric scaling, we find that indeed uh, primate brains overall are big relative to mammals. So here's some comparative EQs from just one study, and there is variation from one study to the next. Uh, but in this study, rodents, uh, their EQ ranges from 0.2 a brain that's a fifth the size that's expected for a mammal of their size to 1.2, uh, 
uh, 1.2 times larger than expected. Surprisingly, carnivores are very similar uh, from 0.4 to 1.7. Uh, primates, uh, the, we start out with prosimians, and here we find the EQ is 1.5, one and a half times larger than expected for a mammal their size. Uh, gorillas aren't much different, so gorillas are the largest primate, uh, but given their large body size, they don't have uh, brains that are disproportionately large. Orangutans are at 2.4, two and a half times larger than expected for a mammal of their size. And chimpanzees are the champions of the primates, other than humans, uh, with an EQ of 3.0. This is a very popular image on the internet of the chimpanzee thinker, and it, there's probably good grounds for that. So humans, it turns out, are big brain primates. Primates are big brain mammals, and humans are big brain primates. Our EQ is 7.2, and you'll find in the literature uh, EQs for humans from 7 to 9, uh, basically. And only one other mammal uh, comes close to us in that EQ, and it's not the heifered cow. So to compare brain size meaningfully, uh, we must do three things. Adjust for relative size, scale allometrically in doing that, and third, we have to maintain phylogenetic consistency. And we're going to dispense with this quite quickly. Uh, what this means is that we should compare humans, for example, to an average mammal. Uh, we could also construct an uh, encephalization index just looking at primates and comparing one primate to another. We could emphasize just hominids and compare humans to the other apes. Um, but we should not uh, try to construct the human EQ in relation to, say, the average reptile, uh, because that would be a lot less meaningful in any evolutionary sense. So thank you for listening.